how to win in a multiple offer situation. If this is you, or if you've been dealing with this problem, or if you're worried about dealing with this problem in the housing market here, especially in Idaho Falls right now, this is gonna help you out. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Rebecca. I'm a realtor based here in Southeastern Idaho, and I make videos every single week talking about pretty much just all things life in Idaho, tips for buying or selling here, um, things to do here, and kind of just life in general as a wife and a mom and a realtor and a business owner for other things because things get pretty crazy sometimes and I just like to bring you guys in on it. Um, but in today's video, I am going to be talking about how to win in a multiple offer situation. Um, the market here, I mean, everywhere in the country, I feel like, but Obviously this is relevant to the market here in Idaho Falls and Southeastern Idaho because this is the area that I work in. Um, but the market here is definitely starting to pick up. Um, it slowed down a little bit over Christmas and kind of at the end of winter. Um, and now as we're getting into the beginning of spring, it is definitely picking back up again. I've noticed it getting a little bit crazier than it was over the past few months. Um, and recently I've had to get a little bit more competitive when I'm writing offers for clients. And I know that a lot of people are dealing with this problem right now or are worried about dealing with this problem if they're thinking about going out and attempting to buy or thinking about buying. So figured I would just make this video kind of talking about some of my tips and tricks for winning in a multiple offer situation, um, how to win in a bidding war without just increasing the amount that you're willing to pay and yeah, just some things like that. So let's jump on in. Okay, and first thing that I want to say is there are definitely ways to win and get offers accepted without just increasing your offer price. So don't think that, you know, you just have to keep forking out more money to be winning offers because that's definitely not the case. Um, my last two buyers that I worked with just in the last few weeks um, had offers accepted and we were not the highest bidder. Um, I mean, it was close, but there are definitely other factors involved and sellers aren't always just looking for the highest number. There are definitely other factors that go into it. Um, and obviously it depends on the seller. So it's very important. Number one, I will say just to have a good agent on your side who is communicating with the listing agent from the very beginning, um, building a good rapport with them and just kind of figuring out from the get-go what's important to the sellers and what they're looking for because like I said, it is not always just the asking price. So make sure you have someone on your team who is doing that and who is just looking out for you because that can honestly make or break your offer from the very beginning. So other than that, when it comes to actually writing and sending out an offer, there are a few other things that can go into it um, and that can kind of come into play for the sellers. So number one, I would say is having either a quick close or a long close, depending on what your sellers are looking for. Um, maybe I've seen situations where sellers are moving out of state or something like that, and they're still working on finding a home in their new city or whatever, and so they're actually hoping for a longer close. Um, in some other situations, they're in a really short timeline, um, and so they need to kind of move quickly. And so in that case, a really quick closing is obviously attractive to them because it just kind of simplifies the whole process for them. So going into it, like I said, you're gonna to wanna to have an understanding of what your sellers, what the sellers are looking for, um, and that's something that your buyer's agent will be communicating with the listing agent on. Um, the listing agent is usually pretty open about giving up that sort of information because that's obviously a big deal to the sellers. Um, and so in that regard, regard, if you are looking at a quick closing, that's something that you're gonna need to talk to your lender about, um, obviously, especially if you're working with a mortgage because a lot goes into that side of it um, in terms of underwriting and just getting everything prepared and squared away on the lending side. So it's gonna vary by, um, by lender how quickly they're able to move I know I have some really amazing lenders here in the Idaho Falls area and they are super fast and they're always very on top of things um, and they can close in like two weeks if we're really on a quick timeline. So it's just important again for your agent to be in communication with all the other parties including lenders and things like that to figure out how quickly you can move in situations like that but again just depending on the house, you're gonna wanna know kind of what the seller's expectations are in terms of a closing timeline so that you can adjust your offer as needed. 
And kind of building off of that is something called post-possession. Um, again, let's say the sellers are going to be moving maybe, but their house isn't going to be ready for them to move into until a few weeks or maybe even a few months after selling their current house. So what you can do is write something um, called post-possession into your offer saying that the sellers are able to stay in the house for whatever, let's just say two weeks after closing. Um, depending on the situation and on the offer, you can either ask for the sellers to pay you rent if you were the new owners of the house, or you could just include that for free just as kind of a perk um, to go along with your offer. But that's just another thing that you can do to kind of sweeten the deal and make your offer more attractive for sellers. Um, just because it kind of takes some stress off of them without having to find, you know, like a short term living situation or something like that while they're kind of in limbo between selling their current house and moving into their next one or whatever it may be. Number three is an escalation clause. And the way that I always kind of explain this to my clients is it's kind of like a max bid. So, you know, on like eBay, when you can bid on something and you can set a max bid. So if someone outbids your initial bid, it'll say, oh, well, my max bid is up to this price, so then I can skip over that next person in line, essentially. Um, an escalation clause is kind of like that. So you could write your offer at, let's just say 300,000. You could also include an escalation clause in your offer that says you'd be going, you'd be willing to go up to 315. Um, so in the event that another, another offer came along that was higher than the 300,000, your escalation clause would kick in and go higher over theirs essentially. Um, so again, just kind of another way to make your offer more attractive um, without just fully like going all in on it and right off the bat saying that we'll offer this much. Okay, and kind of similar to that is what's called an appraisal gap. That's basically where, again, let's use the 300,000 example. So say you offer 300,000, um, but the appraisal comes in at 295. You could include an appraisal gap in your offer that says you would cover that $5,000 difference or whatever it may be. You would set that amount in your offer. So in the event the appraisal comes in low and the sellers aren't ne willing to negotiate going down that $5,000, you could say, well, my appraisal gap covers the $5,000, so I will pay that money out of pocket to basically secure the house and just continue with the agreement. And then this tip isn't really something that you would write into your contract. It's kind of just more on your situation, but just having a clean offer with no contingencies is always usually a little bit more attractive to sellers just because it's less risk on their end. A normal, very common contingency we see is having an offer contingent on selling your current house. So let's say you own your current house, but you're looking to buy another one. Um, you would need to sell your current house in order to have the money to buy this current one. And so this offer on the new house would be contingent on selling your current house. Um, that just creates a little bit more risk for the sellers because it, you know, it's just more liability on the contract essentially, because what if something happened with your current house? What if it went under contract and then fell through and then they've kind of essentially wasted time when it could have be, been on the market or been under contract with another person that wouldn't have fallen through, just things like that. Um, so contingencies are always, you know, not quite as attractive as having just a clean contract with no, um, or a clean offer with no contingencies in it. And obviously this is something that is gonna vary a lot just between your individual situation and it might just not be able to be avoided and that's totally fine because I just gave you a bunch of other tips on how to make your offer more attractive even if you have a contingency, but if it can be avoided, that is something to consider just to keep in mind. Okay, and final thing is a letter to the sellers. Um, this is kind of a controversial topic, honestly. Oregon actually made this illegal last year because people say that it can just kind of create some possibilities of violating fair housing laws um, and also just kind of bringing in communication between the buyers and the sellers is generally discouraged. Um, Honestly, I don't totally agree with all of that, um, but I would just say if you are interested in doing that to talk over it with your agent and just kind of see what their opinion is and just give it some thought on the whole situation, but it is something that you can do just to kind of bring 
a little bit more of a personal touch to it. You don't have to get super personal or give away a bunch of information or anything like that, but just to kind of bring a human aspect to it um, is something that a lot of sellers like too. I'm just gonna leave it at that. All right, so that's it for today, guys. I hope that helped you out um, and hopefully gave you some peace of mind if you've been worried about jumping into this market and competing in a crazy market um, because there are definitely, definitely ways to win in multiple offer situations or just in crazy markets in general. And those are just a few of my tips. So I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any questions on any of it, feel free to leave a question below or shoot me an email, connect with me on social media, whatever you wanna do. I'll leave all that information in the description box below. And yeah, until my next video, I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.